Hello, I'm Dr. Gilmet, and this is a short video covering the standard deviation. So this is a shorter one of what I did in uh, descriptive statistics calculated and explained. So the standard deviation is the average of all the distances from the mean. Okay, I, I think I should say that again. The standard deviation, what it's really measuring, is the average of all the distances from the mean. It is a measure of variability in the data. If the standard deviation is small, then all the data is very close to the mean. As the standard deviation gets larger, the data is moving, on average, away from the mean. So, the formula for the population is sigma, that's your population, right? And basically you take the square root of the sum of the differences from the mean, remember x bar is the mean, squared, divided by n, the number of values. Um, and I guess probably technically that should be capital N because we are dealing with the population. But wait, what's with all this squaring and square rooting in the formula? Well remember, the mean balances the data such that the deviations sum to zero. So let me, let me show you that, right? So in the previous video, the mean, right? I had the median base salaries here and what I did was I took the difference, right? I took the difference between the base salary and uh, the mean. The mean is right here at this cell. The mean is right here, okay, of 49,000, and I subtracted it. And so these are all the positive differences, and these are all the negative differences. And again, that's in the video, the mean, right? And what happened was they summed to zero because it perfectly balances. And so you're like, Okay, so what do I do? How do I work around this problem? Well, basically we have to square everything to make it positive. So what I do is I take that value there and I square it and look how ginormous it is. And then I'm gonna paste this squaring all the way down. And so what happens is now the $8,000 instead of being negative, now everything is positive. So now when I sum it all up, now when I take the sum of all of these values right here, what I get is this big number, this squared sum value of these differences. And that is this part right here. Um, that's the sum of the differences squared. Um, uh, and then we divide, right? Uh, but then we have to take the square root. So obviously, you know, three trillion here it looks like, right? Here's a thousand, three billion um, is way too big for a uh, standard deviation. So what we do is we're going to divide this by the 50. Um, if we took this number right here, so you have to divide. So that would be this number divided by the 50 values, the 50 majors. And what you can see is you get 65 million. 65 million is way too big for the standard deviation. Now this actually has a name. Um, it's called the variance. So if you don't take the square root, we actually call this the variance. And it was very helpful uh, to talk about the variance when it was really hard to calculate square roots. But then the standard uh, deviation is going to be equal to the square root of that number right there and you get the eight thousand one hundred and eleven dollars right now what I want to do real quickly is I want to show you that if you actually do the standard deviation now it's an abbreviation STDEV okay so standard deviation of P, the population, calculates the standard deviation based upon the entire population. So if, I, if I'm considering this the entire population, this is the one that I want to use. And I'm going to use all of my original numbers. I'm not going to use the differences. I'm not going to use the squared differences. I want to know what's the standard deviation of this right here, right? And so when I hit enter, you see that it is exactly the same value. Okay, um, I go through that shortly right here and do the, right, you sum it up, 
you divide, and then you take the square root. So those three steps are right there. Um, but really, when you have only uh, a sample values from the population, they actually tend to be closer to the sample mean, and they actually show uh, and show more variability. Okay, so the values tend to be closer to the sample mean and actually show a little less less variability. Bessel showed convincingly the way to handle this was to make the denominator smaller by subtracting by one. Why are we making the denominator smaller? So the result of the fraction gets a little bit bigger because the sample shows less variability and we need it to be bigger. We need it to show more variability. Um, there is a beautiful Wikipedia article about the Bessel correction and why it's n minus one and not like n minus two or something like that and why this works. If you're nerdy, please go check it out. Um, but the one difference then is for the standard deviation for the sample, we just use s. So I go back. Uh, so here's the standard deviation for my population. Let me make this a little bit bigger so that you can see it. Um, and now what we want to do is we want to do the standard deviation of our sam oops, sample, right? So we're going to do equals and it's stand dev and we're going to do a dot s instead. And now I'm going to grab these same values over here and hit enter. And you'll notice it's only a tiny bit different, right? The standard deviation between the two of them are only a little bit different. There is a small difference. So some people actually argue, like, does it matter which one you use? Yes, for homework, it absolutely does. So really, just pay attention to which one it's giving you. Is it the whole population? or is it just a sample? I'm going to say 95% of the time it is a sample. All right. So good rule of thumb for that. Hey, thank you for watching this video. I hope you come back to my channel.